The UFC 293 press conference just took place featuring Israel Adesanya, Sean Strickland, Alexander Volkov, Taito Ivasa, Manel Cap, some random Brazilian dude, Tyson Pedro, Anton Turcalge, Justin Tafa, and Bilal Mohamed's dad. And it was maybe the greatest press conference in recent UFC history. It started off so good that it just couldn't keep that same level of energy for the entirety of the press conference. It almost got burnt out after the first five minutes that went down because, boys, Sean Strickland did it. He brought up the dog stuff, and any time he brought up the dog stuff, Israel Adesanya shrank into himself, shut down completely. And don't get me wrong, Israel Adesanya did have some lines, and we're going to get to them in a minute. But man, Sean Strickland absolutely put it on him about the dog stuff that I've been trying to call him out for for two, three years. I've known about this. I've been trying to make it happen. And finally, Sean Strickland exposes him for it on the main stage. And people know what an absolute creep Israel Adesanya is. But we're going to go through the press conference in chronological order. I feel like I've made it right now. We actually, I manifested this. You know what I'm saying? I manifested this. For three years, I manifested this moment. And finally, it happens. Loser? Maybe. The fact that this is a highlight of my life? Maybe I am a loser, but I'm, I'm taking the highs, you know what I'm saying, of my life. And this was one of them. Crazy moment. Let's go through it chronologically and talk about the different moments that took place in the press conference. So, first thing I notice, Sean Strickland is getting more cheers from the crowd than Israel Adesanya. And I think a lot of it is because they love Sean Strickland and Israel Desanya is an absolute cringe weirdo. Although a great fighter and probably going to beat Strickland this weekend. Um, he's a cringe weirdo. Everyone loves Sean Strickland. He keeps it real. He's funny. Um, I think it's the dog stuff that's turned a few people, you know what I mean? Maybe I have made a bit of a ripple effect in the community. I'm going to be a bit egotistical, but I think I kind of have. Because I, I think you could hear in the middle of the press conference a few people in the crowd mentioning some stuff about that as well. But... The press conference started off. Manel Cap stole the show as well, but we'll get to it. I've got so much to discuss here. Israel Adesanya gives props to CKB for making UFC 293 happen and all that type of stuff. I'm going to quickly switch off of this screen so it's not so bright on my face, though, the entire time. But Israel Adesanya gives props to CKB, basically saying that it wasn't him that made this event happen. It was all the other people at CKB as well, um, and they were also responsible for bringing the event back to Australia. And then says that he took Sean Strickland seriously. So really basic level stuff, to be honest with you, from Israel Adesanya. I kind of felt like the vibe was from Israel Adesanya at this press conference. If I don't say much, maybe he won't bring up the dog stuff. I'm not sure if that was entirely the case, but I think it kind of was. You know what I'm saying? I think it kind of was. Like a, maybe if I don't say too much and just keep my answers short and simple... Uh, maybe uh, he won't bring up the dog stuff, but Sean Strickland did not take long. He then asked the crowd, who wants to see a fight? Just to rally them up because he didn't get any cheers off of his cringe lines. Um, massive cheers for Strickland. As soon as the media member asked him a question, immediately the crowd erupted into a cheer. He's a massive fan favorite out there in Australia, which is crazy. Then Strickland starts going on about the Chinaman stuff. Obviously, he was going to bring this stuff up. You know what I mean? We knew it. The China stuff, he's been really talking about the China stuff for the past year. He spoke about it on JRE. He starts calling Israel Desanya, this fucking Chinaman, dude, like, I'm going to beat the Chinaman this weekend, and brings up all of this stuff, and Israel Desanya is just sort of like laughing along at it, chuckling to himself about it. He kind of is owning the China stuff this week, right? He's doing the red shorts. He even brought an, a Chinese dude from the crowd just to big him up, just to maybe get sympathy crowd votes. And stuff like that, like, guys, you can't boo me, it's an old Chinese man, show some respect, is basically what Israel Desanya tried to do there. Um, and then Sean says, no more painted nails, no more dark colors, I'm gonna be the best fucking champion. And he starts going off about Israel Desanya being soy and cringe, and how cringe he is, the cringe, cringiest dude in the UFC and all this, which is true, he is cringe. And then um, he brings up all of that. Then, he brings up everything about the dog. Everything. And as soon as he brings it up, the crowd was waiting for it. I know that the whole live chat was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. 
The crowd was waiting in, t in anticipation. When is he going to bring up the dog stuff? Because we've all seen the video. And we've all seen the pages that he was following on Twitter about the, the fetish clubs that he's in. You know what I'm saying? And everyone was waiting for it. And as soon as he brought it up, they erupted, dude. He starts bringing up, maybe I need to fucking upload a video of me jerking off my fucking dog. Maybe this fucking dude. And I've seen the fucking Twitter pages he fucking likes, guys. And all this type of stuff. And it was basically everything I said in my video that needs to be mentioned at this press conference. And I'm so thankful that Sean brought it up because I'm sick of Adesanya fans just acting like that doesn't exist. Any other fighter on the roster... That would be a, like, everyone would switch off of him if that happened. If Paddy Pimlet got exposed for that, can you imagine? Conor McGregor, Paddy Pimlet, Ian Gary. Can you imagine any of these fighters had that stuff come out about him? Colby Covington, the whole fan base would turn on them in an instant. What a weirdo, everyone would be talking about it. It'd be front page news, ESPN MMA. But because this is Raul Desanya, everyone's like, Oh, people just making up claims like, they, like people are just literally acting dumb about the situation like they have been for the last two years. He's been this freak for a long time and now it's on the main stage. Absolutely crazy. And he starts bringing up all that stuff about maybe I should bring Peter to storm the, st storm the stage right now and all this type of stuff that he kept bringing up. And Israel Desanya, whenever Strickland brought up the dog stuff, Body language is a hell of a thing. He shrank into himself like a turtle. Absolutely tucked away, sat back, went all nervous disposition here, didn't talk back whatsoever. That always ended the debate between them. If they were yapping a little bit and Strickland brought up the dog stuff, Adesanya just shut up immediately. And Strickland should have realized that when Adesanya went after him for the monster thing, which we'll get to in a second, because it was actually a, a decent line by Adesanya, but there is some hypocrisy there as well. So anyway, Adesanya comes out with, again, one of the most cringiest lines I've ever heard said at a press conference. He just can't help himself. Um, what did he say? When you argue with a fool, it's hard for those that are watching to know who's who. Boo. And people literally booed at that line. And then Shrink's like, ah, oh, this fucking cringe motherfucker, dude. And he starts bringing up all this stuff like, yeah, absolutely cringe from Israel Desanya again with that line. Listen, he's going to beat Strickland, in my opinion, this weekend. He's an amazing fighter. PEDs might have something to do with that because he grew a boob in the middle of his career. But people ignore that as well. Like they ignore all the stuff about John Jones. It's a weird dynamic that happens. But um, yeah, he's going to win this weekend. But Strickland absolutely roasted him to smithereens. Will it work? Will he get in Israel Desanya's head? I doubt it. Who knows? But we'll see, man. This could be interesting. Anytime you count someone out, there seems to be more of a chance that they get the upset. So let's just keep counting out Sean Strickland, I guess. We move on. After Adesanya's done with that cringe line that he puts out there, Manel Cap, the based one himself, rises and starts going after Kai Kara France. Remember, Manel Cap speaks Portuguese. Of course. I don't know if there... I don't know what else other language he speaks. But this... I think English is like his third language, by the way. You know what I'm saying? I think he speaks a bit of Japanese because he was fighting over at Rising quite a bit and his Twitter handle is in hieroglyph Japanese hieroglyphics, whatever you say for them. It, I know it's not that, but you know what I mean. Um, either way, Manel Cap stands up and starts going after Kai Kara France, who's in the crowd, by the way. He's in the crowd. And by the way... They're going to do a New Zealand event next year. That's the rumor. I know Manel Cap versus Kai Kara France has got to be on that card 100% because the beef has now been set. If Manel Cap wins this weekend, star making performance, probably going to tell off the crowd after they boo him after he wins as well. If he does win, of course, a little bit of a dangerous opponent in front of him. He just made himself a star, made himself public enemy number one. This is what I love when fighters do. We have so many flyweights that just sit up there and give their basic answers like Alex Perez. And then Manel Cap comes in and absolutely lays down the law like a chad. And then as he's going after Kai Kara France and throwing a bottle at him, which is crazy. This is a crazy press conference. As he's going after Kai Kara France, Israel Adesanya realizes, hang on, he's trash talking my teammate. I should stand up for him. And he stands up and starts trying to shut up Manel Cap. And Manel Cap just fucking switches targets. Beep, 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 beep. New target acquired. Israel Adesanya is now the target of Manel Cap, and he starts screaming at Israel. 
<laughs> he's on the same side as middleweight champ Israel Desanya as a flyweight. And he's just shouting at him saying, you need to sit down, mate. You need to sit down now. Sit down. Shut the fuck up, motherfucker. And all this type of stuff that he's saying to him. And Adesanya's calling him out for being short, even though Kai Kara France is literally shorter. So I wonder how Kai Kara France felt about that. It's like when Sean O'Malley was calling me fat in front of Schmidt. A little bit weird. It's when you see where your friends really feel about you. You know what I'm saying? So Israel Adesanya's making a bunch of short jokes. And then Manel Cap starts calling him out even more and says, sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up. And Taito Ivasa is just in the middle of it like this. Like, what is going on right now? Why am I in between this beef? Telling them to calm down. Everyone's trying to tell him to calm down. Israel Adesanya, I've listened to it back, called Manel Cap a cracker ass. Sit down with your cracker ass. So, so I don't know if he's trying to make an excuse to where like, see, I don't just call white people it. You know what I mean? I don't know why he called Manel Cap that. Maybe he said crackhead ass. But it sounded like cracker ass that he called Manel Cap, which is interesting. He can't help but say that word, it seems. Maybe he was charging it for Strickland, and then Manel Cap just took the, the brunt of the force that was charging up inside him. Who knows? Um, and then Manel Cap, remember, doesn't speak English that well. Third language is English for him. Brings up, you oh, shut the fuck up with your cartoon porn addiction, motherfucker. <laughs> That's absolutely being based towards Israel Adesanya again. Adesanya calls uh, Cape a wanker. And then all of the crowd starts going, you're a wanker to Manel Cap. And he starts flipping him off. Manel Cap actually has stolen the show. I wish him versus Kai Kara France was still on. But this actually makes it a little bit better. If he wins this weekend in impressive fashion, that sets up an, an amazing fight between him and Kara France in New Zealand, where there's actually some bad blood on the line and there's actually some interest because who else at flyweight is going to bring that to the table outside of Figueredo? And he doesn't really speak the best of English, you know what I'm saying? So we move on. He then tries to speak to that Brazilian dude. Um, they start having a Portuguese language barrier, which is also weird because Manel Cap speaks Portuguese from Portugal and the Brazilian dude speaks it from Brazil. So they were trying to understand each other, but it was a bit weird. Um, and the guy just ended up saying some generic stuff about I have nothing to say to you and all this weird stuff. And then I'm so hyped about this. I might pass out in the middle of this video. This was crazy to me. Um, Volkov's just confused by the whole situation. He says, I don't even know what is being said on stage right now. <laughs> all this stuff. And Tuivasa and him share a moment about not really understanding what all the small, di uh, small guys are doing. Um, Austin Lane jumps on the mic. Wins over the crowd a bit. Doesn't make himself a public enemy. A little bit soy, but he carried himself okay. Speaks pretty well. Speaks coherently, at least, in sentences and stuff. Uh, Tafa looking for the knockout. Thanks for letting us know. Um, Anton Turkalj, or Turkali as they're calling him. The reporter asks, what is the meaning behind your nickname, the Pleasure Man? Based Anton Turkalj, I'm going to call him because that's how it's spelled, um, says, you want to know what my nickname means? Then you have to ask Tyson Pedro after the fight or your wife. Boom! Schools the reporter, dude. Absolutely scores him. You want to know why I'm, why I'm called the Pleasure Man? Ask your wife, bitch. Boom, dude. Treated him like Tim Elliott. You know what I'm saying? Or JP Bays. Went straight after him, dude. Crazy. And crowd starts booing it. I thought they would have cheered at that and laughed at it. But either way. Um, then Tyson Pedro starts yapping at him as well, talking. And uh, what do I even say to the Pleasure Man? Tyson Pedro starts saying. And then he says, you're going to taste the pleasure in the octagon. Sus. Ayo. Pause. What's going on here? This took a turn for the, <laughs> you know what I mean? This took a weird turn. Trust an MMA fighter to make something sus. They always manage to do so. And then that sort of died down afterwards. And that was a little bit of a funny moment. Um, is he really talking up the China stuff? Bigs up a Chinese dude in the crowd. Um, and I honestly believe he's trying to do the Eminem 8 Mile thing. Right? Where he's trying to say... He's trying to sort of take away the insult from Strickland because he's owning it so much with the red shorts, with bringing that dude in the crowd. I also think a part of it was just, you can't boo me if I'm bigging up an old Asian dude. That'd be mean of you, crowd. So please cheer me right now. Look at how good I'm doing. You know what I mean? So that was kind of his way of trying to win over the crowd and show respect to a guy in China that was a legend of martial arts or something along those lines. So good for him if he did do it for that. But we kind of know it was almost a defense mechanism against the China insults and also just trying to win over the crowd by doing something wholesome. Because um, he had a bunch of opportunities to pick up that dude, but he only did it for this one because 
He knew Strickland was going to bring up China stuff. Strickland gets extra based about China and CCP this and camps this. And they're not going to post any of this on the UFC social media pages and says he didn't sell out. Um, they ask uh, Adesanya about Gastelum and he said, oh, will this be a Gastelum-ish fight? And Adesanya said, Sean doesn't have the chin to Gastelum him. Can't finish a, uh, his sentence. He, oh, no, no, he says that. He, he goes on about Gastelum. Gastelum's different. They're built different. Uh, he's Mexican. They're just built different. So I don't think Sean has the chin. The heart, the grid, maybe, but not the chin. And he goes to keep speaking. And then he doesn't, he stops his sentence and just fumbles it and just holds back the trash talk. Because I think this is the vibe I got from the press conference. Maybe I'm overlooking it. He was just worried about the dog stuff being brought up every time. I really think that was on his mind during that press conference. Like, if I go too hard, he's going to bring up the dog stuff again. And I haven't got an argument against that because I've been exposed. You know what I'm saying? Um, he didn't have any argument. Wouldn't he have said, that's all bullshit and you know it? Like, no. He had an argument for everything else, but not the dog stuff. That completely shut him down anytime it was brought up at the press conference. Um, and then Manel Cap. Calls out Cara France for being injured and absolutely in a third language, by the way. Manel Cap starts bringing up the hypocrisy of Eugene Behrman and the CKB coaching to say that, you know, they have to have a championship standard of showing up to fights when you're injured. Like they tried to use Andricus Duplessis. And then he turns it around and says, this is hypocritical because Cara France isn't showing up because he was injured in camp. And actually formulates a gotcha moment in a third language based Manel Cap. He's won me over this weekend massively. I'm now rooting for him beyond belief at flyweight. Really hoping he goes on to do well. Third language, he's pulling off this type of linguistics. Crazy. Then, um, when Sean keeps mentioning a selling out of uh, Israel Adesanya, Adesanya actually kind of gets him. But when you think about it, he doesn't get him because there was hypocrisy in it. But he kind of gets him about the monster deal when Sean's like, oh shit, yeah, I did sell out for monster a bit. That guy is a bit weak. Uh, is a bit weird. Hans Mollenkamp, the monster dude. Known for being weird around fighters and stuff. And Strickland, although he likes the monster brand because he likes his monster trucks and his uh, dirt bike and stuff like that. So it works for him as a brand. He did kind of sell out to monster in a way. So he can't entirely call out Adesanya for selling out. But then, you, you think you're a monster, but I'm in my prime. Another cringe line from Israel Desanya, and it brings up the hypocrisy because you can't call out Strickland for selling out to Monster when you're selling out to Prime, even though it's an absolute scam and it's literally harmful to you and doesn't do what it says on the bottle. It's an absolute scam organization pushed by one of the biggest scam artists of the modern world, Logan Paul, or the most high profile scam artist of the modern world. Like, that's hypocrisy right there, dude. But either way, I think Strickland should have went back on him like that, but he didn't quite get there. Um, other than that, Strickland calls out Adesanya for race bait and Drickus Duplessis. And Izzy just calls him a neo-Nazi straight, straight away, which is dirt on Strickland that's there to be brought up. But then Strickland stands up and goes on a spiel about how he was once a different man and he grew up rough. And he didn't have it that way. And now he changed his life around and fighting changed him. And now he's a much happier dude and all this type of stuff. I wish he would have turned it around and said, not all of us grow up with servants like you, Israel Desanya. That was a missed moment. I thought that was, that was where it was leading when he was talking about some of us have it rough and I had it rough growing up. I thought he was going to immediately go, we don't all get multiple servants and grow up rich like you, Israel Desanya. That would have been a perfect time to do it. And then... I'm hyped. I'm just rushing through this, but it's already 18 minutes. Brings up him jerking off the dog again, okay? And every time he brings it up, I'm not joking. Visibly, Adesanya goes from this to not even joking. He goes from this, sitting up there all confident, looking cool. Every time it got brought up, every time he shrank into himself like crazy. Um, Adesanya said Sean's words are not affecting him. The media member said, did these words get into you? He went, no. End of that. One word answer. Then, uh, do you think, uh, Sean Strickland said he's more Australian than you. Is that true? He went, yes. Weird. One word answer again. And then, is Sean Strickland more New Zealand than you? This is a big one because you're actually living in New Zealand full time. Adesanya says, yes. 
And then Adesanya says, you know, China, this, that. That's a world champion. That's what a world champion is. I can claim all these places and tries to turn that into a positive for himself, which is kind of a decent way of trying to manipulate that into seeming good for himself. And then he says he's going to knock out Sean, which I think he's going to. And this is what happens. Even though Sean Strickland has unrooted a lot of disgusting things about Adesanya with my help, um, if Adesanya wins, these NPCs on, on Twitter and Instagram are not going to care. And this dog stuff will get put to the back of the line. And it's just going to be about Adesanya shuts up trash talking Sean Strickland. That's all it's going to be about. No one cares about who's right and who's wrong and who's a bad person and who's not. Who wins is all people care about nowadays. Because half the population in the West is an NPC. Simple as that. They're not a conscious human being. They don't care. They just follow the trend. That's all they do. If someone's popular, they like them. If they're not, they don't like them yet. If someone's known to be funny, they find them funny. If someone's not known to be funny yet, they don't find them funny yet until other people find them funny. Then they find them funny. That's how the world is. Um, Izzy does the prime line. I already went over that. Um, Strickland lets out a Chinaman battle cry. Let's go to war with a Chinaman. Let's go. And starts screaming at the end of the press conference. Um, Adesanya barked off stage, which is a little tell towards the dog stuff. So he definitely knows about that. What's up, dude? Um, and then Cap gives a middle finger to the crowd as he walks up on stage. And other than that, last thing, I'm sweating out my mind here. Um, they start... Oh, people in the comments are saying stuff like, Sean Strickland Loki's scared to look at Asanya in his eyes right now. All that talk, but in his face-to-face, he can't even look him in the eyes. Tell me you've never seen a Sean Strickland build-up before without telling me that. He always never looks his opponent in the eye. He always does some cringe, weird stuff. Everyone always says that, oh my God, he's so scared at the face-off. All that talk for nothing. It's the same every time. He does it every time. And... Israel Adesanya has sunglasses on. So how's he supposed to look him in the eyes? You know what I'm saying? I I don't... (laughs) It's like Adesanya comes to the... Look, the Mac Life video title, and this is where I'll probably end the video. The Mac Life video title was Israel Adesanya versus Sean Strickland. Strickland doesn't want eye contact. Adesanya's got sunglasses on. What do you mean doesn't want eye contact? Adesanya came in with sunglasses on. Whatever, though. Like and subscribe. Also, Strickland's a bit bigger than I thought. I think it's because Adesanya ain't 6'4", and we know it. Crazy moment, though. Broke the fourth wall for me, seeing my, 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 uh, my work being put up there on the main stage. I really think I influenced that quite a bit. I know it's egotistical, but I have to be a little bit here and enjoy my moments kind of here, because I created that dog stuff. I didn't create it, but I created it happening at that press conference. That dog stuff has been out for years. And everyone ignored it and was just like, oh, what? Sorry, what dog stuff? No media member covered it. I've been talking about it for years. And now it might have to be addressed. So we'll see if any media members mention it in the future. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Crazy. Crazy world. Thank you for the support. Without you guys, I wouldn't have had the influence to make this happen. See you later.